I listened to five future hooks and this is what I learned. If you like future, hit the like button for me. When it comes to how future makes his hooks, there are certain things that stand out and I want to share some of the things that caught my attention. First song is March Madness and I'm going to go over one cool thing about March Madness. Future juxtaposes two contrasting themes. This is a common technique used in music. You might be using it and don't even notice it. March Madness, he talks about living a lavish and extravagant life and talking about the harsh realities of life such as police violence. For example, look at the lines. It says, we ballin' like the March Madness. All these cops shoot nigga tragic. On one hand, he's talking about ballin' like the March Madness because niggas be ballin'. And then he's also talking about the cops shooting people. And you can picture ballin' like the March Madness and you can also visually see and feel the impact of what it's like when a cop kills a person. In the second song, Fuck Up Some Commas, there were two things that stood out to me. The first thing is the gradual build up when it comes to the money part. Cause he starts out being repetitive. It's like, fuck up some commas. Like, fuck up some commas, yeah. Fuck up some commas. Fuck up some commas, yeah. So that part right there, repetitive, is no really no build up. And then he go, 40,000 to 100,000, 300,000 to 500,000, a million y'all to have a money shout. That is the gradual build up when it comes to the money because people are waiting on that part and people are gonna sing that part because they're trying to count. When a person starts counting, you start counting as well. Future is a genius by doing shit like that. And that locks you into the hook because that's the whole fucking hook. The hook is repetitive. It's simple. It's addicting because you're going to say, let's fuck up some commas and somebody else is probably going to do the counting. You probably fucked up on the counting part a lot, shit damn stuff, because you wanted to count your own way. And the second part to the song is the theme. Money and celebration. Anybody can relate to this. Even if you got paid and you don't even have commas on your fucking check. You feel what I'm saying? You feel like you can, you got some money. Now you're like, yo, I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to go fuck up some commas. Even if you don't have the commas, you're going to say it. Because it's relatable. A lot of people get money. A lot of people spend money. However you look at it. You can fuck up the commas by spending money. You can fuck up the commas by getting money. It don't matter. And then we get to the trophy song. This song has three things that I really learned and I want to share them with you. First part is that the song is so repetitive. All the super lyrical people hate songs like this because songs like this work to reach masses and masses of people, it has to be simple. And the second element to why this song works the way it does is the fact that it has positive affirmations and it talks to the confident. And then it's talking to the girl like, you're the perfect one. Like that's a positive affirmation. This song is about being in love. You can feel being in love. A person that's in love, especially like a new love, they're gonna feel like I found a trophy, right? That's what it's gonna be. If it's a girl that's just falling in love with a dude, she's gonna be like, she's the trophy and he just won. Like vice versa, like this song is perfect, right? It connects with males, it connects with females, it, they, them, whoever. Like it connects with anybody, any person that knows love, wants to be in love or currently in love. And the third element is the metaphorical imagery. When you listen to the hook, listen to the song, you can put yourself in a mindset of what it feels like to win a trophy, whether you won in basketball, football, anything. Like you put yourself in that mindset of what it's like to win. The trophy song really plays on emotions. It really like taps into people's need to love. And then we get the real sisters. And what stood out to me was the contrast and bold statements. You probably think I'm tripping for choosing this song, but just hear me out. The two lines, I don't give a fuck if they was real sisters. And I fuck twin sisters. Those two contrasts create a sense of rebellion and non-conformity. That's out of the norm. Like, who would say some shit like, I don't give a fuck if they was real sisters. That nigga's heartless. He don't give a fuck. And then turn around right behind and say, he fucks twin sisters. How do you try to put that? Like, you a cold nigga to fuck twin sisters. That's not normal. And what most rappers can learn is by incorporating bold and unexpected lines in a song can make them more memorable. Because if you're listening to this song for the very first time, you wouldn't even know what the fuck is going on. It's like, I don't give a fuck if they were real sisters. And what you can learn from those lines, those bold, unexpected lines, is that bold and unexpected usually captures the listener's attention because what they're going to do is like, yo, I got to play that back. What the fuck did he say? Did he say what I just think he said? Let me play it back, play it back. And now they're hooked on that part. Now they're saying that part is catchy. 
right? Because you now you have them locked in. And now we had the song Wait For You. There's two elements to this song that you really need to learn and I need you to learn them now. And the first element that helps make this hook stand out is the emotional vulnerability. Future being vulnerable on a song is something crazy because he preaches this toxic lifestyle, all of these bitches, all this other shit. But him being vulnerable really confuses the listener because they're like, yo, this is something new. We haven't heard this type of future. And being vulnerable in your music and your songs builds a deeper connection with your fans because you're being authentic. They can relate more to you. And the second element is the imagery and descriptive language. For example, the line, I can hear your tears when they drop over the phone. Nobody can really hear the teardrop over the phone. That just shows how intense the conversation is, right? How in tune he's trying to be with the girl on the phone. How vulnerable he is because it's like, yo, I'm hurting you that much. Like, I can hear the tears dropping over the phone. You know what I'm saying? Like, that just paints that. Like, because if you can picture that, like, you can close your eyes. You can picture you talking to a girl and she's crying and tears are hitting the phone, the floor, whatever, right? however you want to paint. And then another line we could use is when I'm loaded, I keep it real. Now think about all the times you've seen on TVs, movies, even in real life. When a person gets intoxicated or too fucked up, they tend to overtell the truth, right? They tell exactly how they feel, no filter. And you can close your eyes and vividly paint that picture yourself. You can see the imagery. You can see how that scene would play out in any type of circumstance. You can just swap yourself out in movie scenes and just really pay attention to that. But those are some things that I learned from listening to five future hooks. Let me know in the comment section below what I need to do next.